Hello, welcome to our webinar this afternoon on being confident and motivated when you're organizing and uh, saving your family photos. My name is Molly Bartelt and I am the owner of Pixology. And I have been spending the last three or four months working closely with consumers trying to figure out why it's so hard to save photos. And, and it's led me to offering a course and I've really been enlightened on what's challenging consumers. So that's why I'm here today is just to give an introduction to coming up with a plan to saving your family photos. So with that being said, I am going to share my screen. I have a presentation and I will mention that uh, you can definitely leave comments, whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, and then I'll probably address those towards the end. Um, but definitely put a hi in there and let me know that you're with me today so that I don't feel lonely. And, um, and so I know that there's people excited about getting some clarity on saving their family pictures. So with that being said, let me switch to the presentation. All right, be confident and motivated organizing family photos. Why is this important? It's important because it's a big task. We have so many pictures accumulating all over the place. And you really have to have some, you know, grit and determination to get through it all. And that's why I'm here is to give you a plan that you can feel good about and know that you're doing it the right way the first time. So let me just get to the program here and talk about common challenges. So <laughs> you can raise your hand and let me know if this sounds familiar to you, but you don't know where to start. You're overwhelmed and you want to do it right. You're also worried that anyone will even care that you did the, the work. You are nervous about throwing photos away. Maybe you don't want to waste time. Technology is a crazy, crazy thing that I mean, how can anybody ever figure it all out? And I've heard that some people just are frustrated that they have no plan. So let's kind of move along. And let me tell you, it is a journey. And some of you may have seen this webinar about five, six weeks ago. And I'm just doing it again because I know there's more people who need to hear this. It is a journey. And we really have to focus to get it done because... If we let a couple weeks go by, those weeks turn into months and years, and then you have a bigger mess than when you first were worrying about it. So I've created the focus system. And the focus system is based on the word focus. Perfect, because that's what we do with our cameras, right? We focus in those things that are important. And the words are an acronym for find it all, organize, curate, make it usable, and then save and share. And often, you know, I mentioned already that you have to have some grit and determination. There is a mindset with this or you'll never finish it. And the mindset is this, you've got to follow the plan. Even if it's not my plan, you can adjust it and, and work with it, but follow it and be consistent. Don't let yourself go down the rabbit holes that can come up when you're organizing pictures like, uh, like you know, um, calling your friends or your family to tell them, oh, I found this photo from 30 years ago. You're not going to believe it. And then you're off reminiscing together. Not good. Or you find a photo that needs editing and you want to crop it or correct the red eye or change the lighting that's going to be a rabbit hole as well when you're thinking about organizing your family photos. You also have to remember that the immediate rewards for this project can be few and far in between. So we have to celebrate small successes. And we have to be clinical and efficient. Remember, we're not calling people, we're not reminiscing. We have to look at the pictures, think if they're good, and save them or toss them. 
and or place them in a year where they go. So we have to be efficient and clinical. It's not time to be emotional or a trip down memory lane. So with the focus system, I take those letters and I deal with them for both digital and printed pictures. So with digital photos, our first task is the F, find it all. So you have to gather your computers, your hard drives, USB drives, camera cards, and photo discs, the CDs, and maybe even DVDs. And you probably, if you're like most of us, you have photos online. And they're probably in, online in places you didn't even know from Google, Amazon, Microsoft OneDrive, iCloud, and more. Pretty much you can guarantee if you've had a smartphone for any amount of time, more than a few months, you've got pictures saving in the cloud somewhere. And that's important because they could be a backup, those online photos, if you lose your phone. But our job in the focus system is to find it all and bring it to one location. And uh, that brings us to the organize of the focus system. O is for organized. And I like for my clients to create a master folder on their desktop. And then they can copy folders into that master file there. And then if we think about having folders within there, we want to have a good naming system. So I have a suggestion for folders there. It's our, our formula for naming folders. It's the year with four digits, the month, and then the date. Now, the folders, whether you're using a Mac or a PC are very important to our focus system. Understanding how your computer's file structure works is really important. So your finder on the Mac is gonna be your right-hand tool and file explorer will be the tool on a PC. And you're gonna create folders. And you bring them all into the organize and, and you work on renaming the folders, you know, in the years so you can start seeing things come together. So for instance here, I just have two different lists of photos, the left sides from a Mac. And you can see I've labeled the folders with the year first. Sometimes I have the month if there is, you know, a specific event that I'm talking about. And then I have some category folders at the bottom. On the right hand side, I have all the nested folders, at least for half of the year from 2016. So my 2016 folder has these nested folders in them. And you can see how they organize nicely chronologically because I've used that naming system. Really, really does help bring it together. So once, and this isn't just, let me just tell you, this is not a quick, um, a quick situation, bringing all of your folders together. It can take some time and getting used to working with folders. And if you need help with that, I do have a video that I'll, I'll try to link up later on YouTube that talks about folder structure, especially on a PC. So uh, you work on getting your folders organized. Then you're gonna go into the C part of focus and that's curate. This is where we use a duplicate finder program. And I've listed a couple items here. Um, for the Mac, it's Photo Sweeper. And on a PC, Duplicate Photo Cleaner is good, as is Duplicate Photos Fixer. And you work with that duplicate finding program. You run the duplicate finder on different folders to find you know, where you've got copies of pictures and it's inevitable if you've been saving your pictures to your computer and you had them in the cloud and you know maybe on a, a external hard drive you're going to have duplicates so a duplicate finding program is really important and the people who are currently in my course are using this um, really successfully to to kind of systematically get rid of all those extra pictures and 
You also, in the curate section, you really want to think about your digital photo goals. How many photos do you really want? Um, so you want to delete repetitive pictures. And you know what I'm talking about there because we have repetitive pictures of babies and pets where we're just trying to get the best picture. Honestly, it's better to it's better to take that um, to take that that camera and put it down because we are just you know we're so crazy about taking pictures and then we never delete them. And deleting is so important because you don't want to have thousands and thousands of photos to wade through. So deleting repetitives and then. You can think about your folders maybe holding 25 pictures to 250 to 500 photos each. Um, that gives you kind of a manageable amount, not too little to make it annoying, and then not too many to make you have to scroll endlessly to get to the bottom. So that's the kind of the curate part of the process. In the next step, we want to make the pictures usable because, all right, they're in the folders, that's handy, but you know, how can we really enjoy working with them? And that usually means bringing them into a photo management software. And once you're in the software, you can work with the photo's metadata. The metadata is so important because it tells you all about your, your uh, pictures, when they were taken, and what size they are, and you can add tags and keywords or uh, tags or keywords and descriptions or comments. So what does that look like? In this next screen, first of all, you have many choices for one digital home. And I have just a handful on here. I have reviewed most of these on my YouTube channel. There are some that really stand out to me. They are uh, listed here. So the top left is the Photos app for Apple users. So iPhone and Mac users have the Apple Photos app. In the middle, we have Amazon Photos, which many people use. And I'm finding they don't really understand how it works. But the app, Amazon Photos app, um, comes free if you're a Prime member. So a lot of people have taken advantage of that, but I don't think they're understanding exactly, you know, how it fits into the bigger scheme of their whole photo collection. Then on the right side at the top is the Google Photos app. And so any Android phone user has uh, photos probably in their Google Drive, in their Google Photos app. And uh, people who have, been given links to Google Photos, may even have photos in their own Google Photos app. Uh, and they access it by going to google.com and uh, signing in, and they might find that there are photos in there. And it's just another example of how technology is collecting our pictures, and, and we're not understanding how it works. And that's what I'm here to try to help with. The bottom two photo management programs are my favorites, and I actually use them both. Mylio is a very powerful photo management program that is installed on a Mac or a PC, and it displays your pictures wonderfully and gives you a lot of flexibility in organizing photos, editing them, and more. Forever, is an online private storage account and you can do a lot of work in forever the most important thing about that company is they agree when you purchase storage to save your photos and migrate them to the newest technology for your lifetime plus a hundred years so that's really exciting but they also offer you the ability to create photo books and gifts um, you can actually have media digitized with them and a lot more so those are my two go-to's now when it comes to metadata i wanted to just give you an example of what metadata is so this is a picture of me from this summer um, at an archery competition and 
it's in the Photos app on my computer, my Mac. And I have clicked the Command key and I to get the info. So you can see I took this picture with an iPhone X. I have myself tagged in it. And archery, uh, my first 900 competition, is in the description. The date was September 12, 2021. And if for some reason this was wrong, I could edit the date uh, in the Photos app on my computer. Metadata in uh, Google is handled a little bit differently. You do not have as much ability to edit the metadata. Um, but you can see here on the right-hand side, I have clicked the I button for information in my Google Photos online. And in that information tab, I can see that I have a, a title, Hannah's graduation. I can see the date. I could change the date. I also know what phone it took. And I see who took it and the location. So this is something else that's kind of important to know about Google. Google has all of your information, right? And they use your data to market to you through web advertising. And it's one area of concern for people who might want to keep this information private. So it's just food for thought. But the metadata you can work with in Google Photos, but it doesn't always download after you've spent time editing it. So you want to be sure that your metadata is saved when you take the time to edit it. Now here's another photo. And we are in the program called MyLeo that I was telling you about. The info tab on the right side has a lot more information, OK? So we, we have it that this is back when we were dating. And the, the date is actually listed there as January 1st, 1993. And clearly, it was a scanned photo. And MyLeo allows you to easily change the date by just clicking on the date and editing that. I could add the keywords and tags as well. And there is a lot more that Mylio offers, but I just wanted to show you how the metadata works here as well. Then we have Forever. This is the online storage that I was referring to. And we are looking at a picture opened in Forever. And this is just a fun picture I took of a family at a park. And they let me use it. And you can see I have the name, the description. I have a tag with family in it and the date taken. On the right-hand side, you can also see Edit Info. And I could change all of this if need be. And honestly, it is good to be able to edit your metadata and know that it's going to be saved. So when you put the work in, you, you want to be sure that you can download the pictures with the, the updated metadata. Never mind editing changes like, you know, cropping or changing the color, or adding a filter, or taking red eye out. So this is a little bit about the Forever app. OK, and it's available online. You go to the website or you can use the app on your phone. Now, that was kind of a quick overview on the digital side of pictures. So I am going to move into the printed side. In the focus system, I did not go into the S. Uh, for digital pictures because the printed picture process brings us to the S in the end, okay? So in the printed photos, we definitely want to find it all. And that means all the pictures in the bins, envelopes, drawers, bring it all to one location. And then that includes your albums and scrapbooks and Get it all together. That's actually quite an accomplishment. And I always tell my clients to take a picture of, of that when they've done it because it's one of those small successes. And sometimes it can take a while to accumulate it to one location. There's also tools that you're going to need for organizing photos. And that can include bins and dividers and um, 
uh, all sorts of things that I will get to. So the printed photo process in organizing, we use the chronological method. That means we organize by years, okay? And sometimes people want to organize differently, like by family member. So I had one client who wanted to have her, her, her three children have their pictures in separate stacks. Well, it made it hard when the pictures had more than one of the kids in it. So we had a stack for each child, the two daughters, all three kids together, and it got to be kind of unmanageable. So we teach the chronological method and we're going to have a first inventory and sort. So you take all of those things that you've collected to one location and you sort it by decade. All right. And then you might have a couple other extra categories like career or military or, you know, family groups, if you've inherited batches of pictures, you're probably going to want to keep like your grandma's photos, you know, as a separate category, a separate category. So you have your decades and then your family groupings and maybe career or military or whatever might be meaningful to your family. That first inventory and sort should go relatively fast. And I will have a picture of that in a second. The second sort in organizing printed pictures is going deep, organizing, organizing by year. So you break each decade down by year and divide up the pictures that way. And we have a, a fun tool um, to kind of help date pictures. We call it the age chart. And uh, if you want to download that, you can go to our website and click on our tools section and find the age chart. So this is an example of one person who had a lot, like it was a whole conference room table. And you can see all the albums stacked up there, the loose photos, the envelopes of photos, the frames, the awards, and there's memorabilia stuck in there. It's a big job. Uh, we spent, two of us, two hours, and we were able to sort it by major category of decades. And we also found in their film VHS tapes and negatives, and we put the frames to one side because Sometimes our clients want to actually put the pictures back in the frames. So we kind of have to keep a little bit closer tabs on those photos. So in here you can see we have heritage pictures. There's memorabilia on the bottom. And there's an unknown bin. There are going to be some things that you don't know right off the top of your head. We don't spend time at this point trying to figure that out. So the unknown bin is really helpful or it might be mixed media bin like you have mixed years or whatnot and it could be put in there for um, looking at closer later the important thing is to get through it all and then identify it really plainly like this so that you could maybe even stack this away and pull one bin out at a time to work on. If you're short on space, that's been really helpful. So that is the first inventory and sort. It really helps you kind of feel a little bit calmer looking from all of that to going to this. Then, in the second sort is when we start pulling the albums apart and putting them into photo boxes with dividers. And you can see here that we have uh, photo boxes, some bins and some whatnots. And we, you know, use those, those um, green dividers to kind of start the years as we go. So this is in process. Underneath the table are the empty photo albums. And it's so satisfying to kind of see that come together. Then in this photo, we have all the photos out of their albums and they're organized by years. And you can see there's one I see blue in the middle, 1980s, TBD, like to be determined. There are some photos you're never going to actually 
accurately figure out which date they are, but you could put, you know, 1980s unknown or 1980s undated, something like that. The point is to not labor over this, it's to figure out something that works good enough because this is a whole lot better than what we first started off with. In the back row, um, the back table, you can see we have uh, some more bins. That's probably about 3,000 pictures back there um, that were duplicates or repetitive pictures. And, um, and that's a lot to, to weed out. Each box here holds about 1,000 photos. So the keeper photos here, we're looking at about six or 7,000 pictures, if you can imagine that. So that is um, the process that we use to kind of break things down over, over time. Now, the third sort, fine tuning by month, that's when we take the years and break them down by months. And there are some years where you can have a thousand pictures. The 90s uh, were notorious for a lot of pictures being taken. And that's a lot of pictures. You don't want to scan uh, an even 500 photos in one year without putting them in some order. So you can start the pictures that are in October are pretty obvious. The school starting in September. You have New Year's at the beginning of the year. You can, and you know your birthdays. So you can put them in some sort of, you know, better order by month. And curating is making it, you know, really you really focused on it and and it makes more sense when you look at the digital files if they're in order so in this picture you can see we actually made labels with the year and then the month on it and this these are important because the next step is to make it usable with scanning them and those dividers become the name of the folder that the pictures are scanned to so that brings me to making the photos usable, which is the U in our focus system. And we're going to talk about scanning options, importing and copying to one digital home, and then other media types. So with scanning options, there are several scanning options out there. And um, a lot of people are familiar with using their printer scanner. And you just want to make sure that you know the settings. You're scanning to a JPEG, and uh, 600 dots per inch is the recommended resolution. For a better solution, um, a faster solution, let me say, we have the Epson Photo Scanner, the Epson Fast Photo 680. These are about $600. If you have thousands of pictures, these this will make your life so much easier. It scans fast and it saves it right to folders on your desktop. You do have to la label it and make sure that you have your settings right, um, but it works really well. Another high-speed scanning option is Easy Photo Scan with um, their Rent-A-Scanner and they rent the picture saver scanning systems and that's very powerful. I think it is a little bit more expensive because they, they're they really good scanners, um, about $500 a week. But if you go in on that with someone, you can scan you know 10,000 photos in a, a week if you're really determined. We had one gal who scanned 7,000 pictures in a 10 hour time frame. So it's possible. The other option is to hire a local company. Um, we, we do that kind of thing here, of course. Um, but if in your area, you might have a local company to do that as well. Then you might also come across other media types in your collection. So you remember in that photo, we had video and film. Um, there were slides and even negatives. Those we usually set aside, like you saw, and consider them separate projects. And for slides and negatives, you can find a local provider for them. Um, or if you want to do something yourself, the Wolverine scanner 
we we have used that here. It's not the highest quality scan, but it runs around $150 maybe on Amazon. And you can just slide your your um, grid right through, and it takes about like six, 10 seconds per slide to scan, and it saves to a camera card. Now, usually they just come with one of the grids there. We, we bought a couple of them because it made it more efficient. Today, this is many years ago that we used this, but today we actually use a high, um, a very powerful photo scanner that's no longer made, but it does wonderful clear scans and color correction and dust and dirt removal. So that's for slides and negatives. For film and video and audio, when you find these, most likely you're gonna have to find a provider for them as well. Now for videotapes, if you're, if you're like not minding doing it yourself and, and possibly getting frustrated, um, VHS to DVD is a solution that you can buy at Best Buy or online VHS to DVD and you can transfer your own tapes if you have a device to play them into your computer. And that could be an option, but most people are finding a location to, to have them done. And what you wanna make sure is that you get DVDs not as the only solution. DVDs are going away. You want the MP4 files, the video files. It could be an AVI or a, a, a dot .move for Mac. And these allow you to edit. You can edit your videos and maybe cut out some of the soccer game that went on forever and just save the important parts of the video. Uh, same with audio, you would find a local provider. You can send them out um, if you are okay with um, sending your, your precious memories away. Uh, I definitely recommend using a trackable shipping method and maybe not sending everything all at once. So um, that's a little bit about film and video and audio. Now, the other thing that I alluded to already was all of the memorabilia and documents. Those need to be saved as well. And uh, you really, they're almost, I mean, they're really important. This could be certificates. It could be invitations. It could be, I mean, we've seen napkins. We've had coins. We've had artwork and all of that. That can be scanned as well and preserved. So... When I was talking about the local options, I thought I would just elaborate a little bit more on this and mention that Walgreens and Costco are not a local option. They will ship your memories away to a, a, a national provider. And I just wanted you to be aware of that. If you can find a camera store or specialty shop like Pixology, you know, that's your best bet. And I have a picture of my Corvellos um, because we've, we've enjoyed working with them. Um, you also might want to check with your library or local historical society. They might have equipment you can borrow and that can really save you a bundle. So once in the, the whole focus system, we've found it all, we've organized it, we've curated it, we've made it usable, we've brought you know, all of our digitized pictures together in the photo home. We also wanna be able to save and share them, you know, make photo books and other types of photo gifts. And we want to have access for your family you know, today and in the future. And that's why we like to recommend Forever. We are ambassadors for the company and we have had we probably had, um, I think, over 700 people use it um, who are using it in one way or the other over the past eight and a half years. Now, the storage is you own it. It's guaranteed for generations, and your photos are private. At the top of the screen here, you can see how um, they have the preserve and organize with the storage. They have a digitized service. You can stream videos from your storage account. 
you can create and print many different types of GIFs. And there's um, other options that you can explore too. They're really like a one-stop shop for all things photo. So at this point, I am just switching the screen over so that we can, you know, answer sound. Oh, and Linda Edwards mentioned that she has no sound. And I am so sorry. Um, I think it's a matter of turning the volume up on your computer. And if you want to, I'm going to put my email into the comments. If you have any troubles or you want a copy of the um, these handouts, let me know so that we can uh, get those to you. And um, and I I really apologize about the no sound. Oh, all right, we have another another person who has no issues. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, so um, I now I'm just. Throwing it out there, do you have questions about um, any part of this? It's printed or digital. Um, you know, focus, you know, bringing it all together, organizing it, curating it, and then making it usable with a, a, a program, and then saving and sharing. And I told, you know, I'm just kind of waiting to see if there's any questions in the, the chat area. Um, oh, yeah, so <laughs> Pam, thank you. She's making sure the video is not muted. Um, she had that problem too. Technology is just, it's crazy. I, and I help people with this every day. You would think that things would be easy. We're so advanced compared to where we were 20 years ago. And, and I know that even what I said here probably is still somewhat overwhelming. And um, it's because there's so many technologies that we are working with. And I'm sorry, I, I feel like it's time to take a stand and say, whoa, <laughs> let us catch up a second. Because before you know it, and it's like already here, like they can actually make your pictures move. And I am sure in not too long of time, we will be able to um, have a video that we can put a VR glasses on, you know, the virtual reality, and we'll be able to walk into our memories. And I actually just don't think that that's a good thing. <laughs> First of all, and I'm gonna just um, uh, quick answer Lois's question here. She joined late and you can most definitely replay this. That's why I'm recording it and it'll be available. So, um, you know, with technology, it's coming at us so fast. And, you know, when I, I was looking at a, a client's computer this morning and on her, in her Windows uh, File Explorer, that's where the folders are, she had OneDrive, Dropbox, iCloud, all in there. And she, she really didn't know how it worked. And some of that meant that she had her pictures on her computer in two different places. And the pictures were living in the cloud. And this is not a good situation. We're going to lose photos. So I, I really feel strongly that people need something more. And um, that's why I'm, I'm doing these webinars to kind of hear what troubles that people have and to figure out better how to help. And if you're interested in learning about the eight-week course, which um, it's called the Focus System, and we meet weekly. The class is starting in January and it will be live. Um, in the future, it will probably be recorded uh, because some of this does, you, sometimes people need their own time to keep up with the work and you want to do it at your own pace. But the live class with me helping um, each week is uh, starting January 6th. And my email is in the comments. If you want to know more about that, I would be happy to schedule a, a, a call with you. We do it over Zoom and we can talk about it. And um, I, I'm not seeing any other, <laughs> any other questions about photos. And that makes me wonder, well, did I completely overwhelm you? 
because um, this was a very simple um, explanation of the focus system. When I first started teaching people about photo organization, which was eight years ago, uh, it was quite different back then. And I have learned so much along the way. But in the beginning, I used to do a, 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 a two hour class that talked about printed and digital photos. And the people who attended those class came, and I, I think they enjoyed it, but then I never saw them again. And when I did, it was like, I know I've got to do this. I just can't wrap my head around it. Or other things in life get in the way. And you know what? That's just the shame of it. And so sometimes things just go by so fast, and now you have another five years of pictures you have to figure out what to do with. So that two-hour class I knew wasn't enough, so I split it up into two two-hour classes. So I would meet at this local college, um, uh, and I'd, I'd meet for two hours, talk about the printed side, and then I would talk about the digital side the next week. And I still didn't see people again. And... And I'm realizing, you know, as I come across them again, it's the same thing. I just can't, I just can't figure it out. And I don't have the time and I'm frustrated. And I knew this summer something had to change because I wasn't really impacting consumer habits. And that's what we have to do. So the focus system now is not this one hour quick overview that I gave you. It's eight eight weeks of an hour and a half class. And then we also have a support call in the beginning because what we go over in class, people have to practice, put into use. And then if they have troubles, then we can touch base on it. And the accountability along with the support, I think has really made the difference. And one, one gal, somehow I have to get this on a video. She's like, nobody, in the world could teach this but you. <laughs> and I don't know why that is. When you go online, um, especially on YouTube where the how-to videos are, there's so much out there, but it's so technical. And it kind of leaves those of us who, you know, don't understand the basics enough, you know, in, kind of in a lurch. So in the focus system, I teach computer skills first, and then I explain the differences between the computer and the cloud. And then we deep dive into digital organization and deep dive into printed photo organization. So um, I know I've got people watching here, but I don't, I know Tammy says, I love this idea and I'm so grateful for that. And um, Linda says, says they enjoys, you know, watching and, I am so grateful for that. And because I'm not, you know, seeing questions, um, I, I'm wondering if there isn't any out there and and maybe there's just too much to, to comprehend here. But um, I do wonder about that. So even after we're done, if you leave comments, that would be fine. And, it, and you could also email me. My email is up there and um, we could get a... a, a an appointment set up. So I've rambled on a lot, but just know this. I, I'm here to help you save your pictures the right way the first time and make sure you can enjoy them today. Save them with your, um, save and enjoy them with your friends and family. And then know that you're leaving a legacy behind. Um, Pam, <laughs> Thank you so much. I know it was a lot of information and I appreciate your thoughts. So um, with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up and definitely reach out because if you tell me something that I could add to help people, I'll mention you, you know, in the future. It means a lot to me. So thank you guys so much. And then um, we'll see you sometime in the, the future. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>